Good morning, everyone. We are <laughs> thank you. We are so pleased to welcome you today. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Lauren Jesnicki. I'm a senior vice president overseeing Bazuto Development's work in the New England area. This is an exciting milestone for our partnership with the MBTA, which kicked off in the spring of 2016 to re-envision the next chapter for this seven acre parcel adjacent to the North Quincy Red Line Station. For the last three years, we worked diligently with stakeholders from the T, Mass DOT, City of Quincy, and Neighborhood to develop the plans for this transit-oriented mixed-use development. In honor of this great milestone, we are delighted to unveil today the new name for this new community. Inspired by Abigail Adams' amazing legacy and longtime residency in Quincy, the North Quincy Redevelopment Project will now be named the Abbey. Inspired by the First Lady's love of the written word, we created custom notebooks for the Abbey and are pleased to give them to you as a small gift to mark this special day. They'll be available at the end of the ceremony. We are honored to be joined this morning by our distinguished speakers, Bazuto Group founder and chairman, Tom Bazuto, Governor Baker, Under Secretary of the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, Scott Bosworth, City of Quincy, Mayor Koch, Atlantic Development founder, DJ McKinnon, and Bazuto CEO, Toby Bazuto. Before I introduce Tom, I'd like to take, to take a moment to recognize our partners, colleagues, and stakeholders who could not be here in observance of the Rosh Hashanah holiday. We'd like to recognize their incredible contribution to the success of this amazing project. And now I'd like to introduce Tom Bazuto, founder and chairman of the Bazuto Group. Thank you, Lauren, and Happy New Year, everyone. Um, thank you all very, very much for joining us on this beautiful, beautiful Monday morning. How terrific that you are all the very first people to know the name chosen for our new community, the Abbey. A week ago, I had the privilege to hear Governor Baker talk to a group of people about how difficult development is in Massachusetts, and particularly how long it takes to get a project started. Well, Governor, in some respects, this development has taken more than 40 years. <laughs> Let me explain this and tell you why this groundbreaking is particularly important to me and the Bazuto Group. I was born in New England, and early in my career lived here in the Boston area trying to build housing. Worked on a couple of projects, completely unsuccessfully. So as my partners, can, in fact, that's why I ended up moving down to Maryland. So as my partners can tell you, ever since we founded the company, it's been a personal dream to develop and build in the Boston area. I finally feel, thanks to our surrounding <laughs> folks, I finally feel that I've been able to return home. So thank you for that. And what a great honor it is to be building in, th in this, the city of Quincy, a city of tremendous historic significance. We are particularly pleased that our efforts are helping to strengthen and expand housing opportunities in North Quincy. We are ecstatic to be working with the T on the creation of much needed transit oriented housing. As our vision for the Abbey begins to materialize into steel, concrete and wood, I am at once thrilled, humbled, and grateful for this opportunity. After all, this is known to many as the birthplace of the American dream. 
Now it becomes the place our collective dreams turn into a vibrant new reality. Before closing, I want to highlight that the Abbey would not have been possible without strong relationships, support, and guidance from Governor Baker. Mayor Koch has been just amazing in his vision and his support. The people of the MTA have been wonderful. Our partner at Northwestern Mutual has been, as usual, strong and steady and supportive and just a great partner. But especially T.J. McKinnon and his colleagues at Atlantic. T.J. is just one of the most extraordinary professionals I've worked with in my career. T.J., thank you. And to, to all of them, I say thank you and congratulations. And with that, I am very honored to introduce one absolutely indispensable partner, the most popular, and in many, many, many regards, the single most successful governor in America, Charlie Baker. Thank you for any time, Tom. So first of all, I just want to say how much uh, we appreciate your presence here this morning. But what I really appreciate is what's going on behind us here. Um, Tom saw me speak at a real estate conference over at Harvard, and I talked about um, the fact that we have tremendous housing issues in Massachusetts. And while we've done um, eight or ten uh, transit-oriented development projects over the last several years and have somewhere between 15 and 20 in the pipeline. Uh, and those numbers actually by historical standards are pretty good. We really need to be doing two or three times that amount of transit-oriented development to really deal, and all kinds of other housing, senior housing, uh, mixed-use housing, housing in downtowns, you know, re rethinking downtowns to deal with the fact that uh, you can't build a, re a downtown anymore on retail. You have to come up with a variety of alternative uh, solutions that typically involve housing, office space, uh, hospitality, entertainment, recreation. And the places around the country that understand this are really making progress on it. And I have no problem with what we're doing. My biggest concern is how fast we're doing and how much of it we're doing. And in a state that's added 600,000 people to our population over the course of the past uh, 15 or 20 years during the same period of time when we've added a fraction of new housing uh, to accommodate that, this is one of the biggest challenges we face. And while projects like this uh, are a big part of how we respond to the demand in the market and the demand from uh, the people in our communities, there's so much more to be done. Um, but today, we do have a project that's two years from beginning to today which all by itself is, uh, is quite an accomplishment. And I want to give all the folks that are involved in this pro process and this project a lot of credit for moving the ball quickly down the field. And I'm sure, Mayor, a lot of that has to do with your leadership and with the folks on your team, because this doesn't happen if you don't have a partnership. Um, from our point of view, the opportunity associated with this project, the work we're doing all the way up and down the red line, not just on the stations, but on the tracks and the power systems and the signals and the switches and the trains and everything else um, is going to create a terrific corridor uh, heading here onto the South Shore and all the way through on the other side to Alewife. And, uh, and I can't wait to see what this all looks like a couple years from now. Uh, when a lot of the work um, that's involved in it has been completed. I also want to say how much we appreciate the presence of Representative Chan. Um, the legislature on uh, almost all things related to public transportation has been a terrific ally uh, to the administration and to the T. But there's tons more to do, and my only issue on it is I would like to do more faster, um, and hopefully if we can get a housing bill through the legislature this year that gives us the ability to dramatically amp up uh, the pace and the speed with which we do work. We'll be having lots more of these types of groundbreakings around the Commonwealth over the course of the next few years. And with that, I want to turn it over to Scott Bosworth, who's an undersecretary at DOT and spends a good deal of time 
dealing with all of the real estate issues associated with transit-oriented development here in Massachusetts. Scott? Thank you, Governor. It's a privilege to be in your administration each and every day. Uh, listen, I'm super excited to be here standing in for Secretary Stephanie Pollack and General Manager P Stephen Poftak. Uh, but I'm really excited because I'm a red line user each and every day. It takes me about three minutes to walk to the train station. And uh, I can tell you firsthand the quality of life and convenience is just incredible. So it's, it's terrific. But Secretary Pollack asked me to um, use my moments here to, to, be, uh, to, to show thanks to our partners, to our partners that all brought this forward. Um, any of you who work, in, work with uh, government knows that government real estate is challenging. There's a lot of stakeholders, and these stakeholders really delivered here. Um, certainly, first and foremost, the city of Quincy. Mayor Koch and his team, uh, Chris and, and, and Frank and, and others, were just amazing to work with, um, and we really appreciated that. Uh, the elected representatives, Senator Keenan, Representative Ayers, Representative Chan, uh, really you know, kept us on our toes the whole time, making sure that we're addressing the community needs, and we thank you. Uh, certainly the community itself, the neighborhood groups, they were, um, again, very, very vocal, but helpful in, el in helping all of us bring to, uh, forward the best project we could. Our business partners. Uh, particularly Lauren and DJ from Bizzuto and, and Atlantic. Um, you know, I, I met reference to earlier today. These folks understand and are very appreciative of how hard it is in government. We are generally risk averse. We need to be to protect our, our passengers and our citizens, but they are very understanding and respectful of that process. We thank you and we look forward to doing more with you. And our, our real estate team. We have our folks here from uh, MBTA Real Estate um, work really hard, have tons and tons of projects. Um, in, in the private sector, you'd have you know, a whole team just associated with this project alone. And these, these ladies and gentlemen have dozens and dozens of projects across the Commonwealth. And lastly, our customers. Our customers, are uh, we're asking them to endure some uh, inconveniences here as we go forward and throughout, uh, you know, throughout the uh, upgrades to the entire system, and we appreciate that. We appreciate their flexibility and understanding as we, um, as we continue to, to upgrade the red line and, and certainly bring on TOD. The reality is we don't develop to develop to make money. We develop to create revenue to continue the investment that the governor and, and the lieutenant governor uh, are making in the red line. We are making a billion dollars investment from end to end, and as a result, we're going to have three-minute headways, we're going to have 50% more capacity. Uh, it, it, it truly is going to be um, a new red line from top to bottom. So on behalf of Secretary Pollack, uh, General Manager Poftak, I want to thank you and I look forward to, uh, to the uh, ribbon cutting here and the groundbreaking up the street in Quincy Center. Thank you very much. And I, so I get the opportunity of uh, introducing DJ McKinnon from Atlantic Development. I've known DJ for a long time personally, and, uh, uh, and, but professionally and personally, one of the finest gentlemen I've ever met. So thank you, and thank you for your commitment to this project. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. And uh, welcome to everyone. Welcome, Governor Baker, Mayor Koch. Um, I think I've seen some of the legislative team here, but I'm going to mention them all just in in case I didn't see him, but they are here. Se Senator Keenan, Representative Ayers, Representative Chan, who I know I did see, um, and Representative Mariano, if he's here. Thank you to Scott, our Undersecretary of Transportation. I see a number of other MBTA officials, MassDOT officials, Quincy Councilors. Thank you all for coming. Uh, people ask me, you know, how do these large, complex developments happen? How do you start with a seven-acre parking lot and transform it into a new community? And what I tell them is it takes leadership and partnership. The leadership starts at the state level with our governor and lieutenant governor uh, establishing the policy to rebuild the MBTA, improve the neighborhoods, generate revenue for the T, and also increase housing production. We then move on to our leadership at the city level with our mayor, who's established policy to create a welcoming environment for business investment improve the neighborhoods, promote affordable housing initiatives, and expand the tax base. And with that leadership, it then allows us to move into what I call really the partnership phase, 
So at Atlantic Development, we're very grateful for our partnership with Bizzuto. And I do want to mention kind of a special recognition that Bizzuto, for Bizzuto, they were recently named by Multifamily Executive Magazine as the top property management company for online reputation for the fifth year in a row. Five years in a row as top property management company in the country is a tremendous tribute to their leaders, Tom and Toby Bizzuto. Tom and Toby, thank you. And, and then as many have mentioned, our partnership with the MBTA. Uh, we've entered it into, that gets formalized in a 99 year ground lease. It's a, a long time that we married together. Uh, you know, $200 million in ground rent that we'll be paying to the MBTA to help with other improvements to the system. It's a real tribute to the hard work of the Fiscal Management Control Board, as well as the MBTA Real Estate Department and their consultants, the Mass Realty Group, along with all the other staff in the MBTA that we worked with. I'd also like to thank our city councilors. Uh, you know, as I stand here, I can remember uh, the first neighborhood workshop that we had uh, a couple of years ago, hosted by Councillor Harris and Councillor Kane, and I thank them for getting the process started. I'd like to thank all our neighbors, both residential neighbors, lots of business neighbors who we're able to work with. Uh, thank our design team that's here today, and you know, even thank our legal team, led by Dave Mahoney and Bob Harnaz, to help us through the permitting process. Uh, all the city agencies that we work with, planning, public works, affordable housing, the mayor's executive staff, conservation commission, public safety, police, fire, inspectional services. You know, a great team to work with. And Quincy being a historic city, those agencies focus very long term. And a good example is that, um, is with the coastal and resiliency design. So. You may have noticed where we sit geographically, all the surrounding neighborhoods channel all their stormwater through our site on the way to the Neponza River. So that was a big concern early on. Uh, with the outdated systems, they all needed to be replaced. The cities had our design team focus long term to manage that. So taking into account the long term resiliency for storms, we've installed drain pipes large enough that people can walk through. In fact, as an added measure of safety, we even upsized them so the governor could walk through them. So. <laughs> I'd also like to thank our financial partner, Northwest Mutual. They've been great to work with on this development. And that, with their funding, it, it allows us to reach the construction stage, which we're under now. Uh, we have Bazuto Construction working with our general contractor, Callahan Construction Managers, who's been great. And then to the actual building of the development, being able to work with the local building trades. We have a strong presence of the local building trades on site now. Now, they know how challenging it is to make our budgets work on these development. And I'd like to give a special thanks to the local unions for their hard work to help bridge the economics and have the local tradespeople building the Abbey. Starting with the International Union uh, oh. Starting with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 103. I see Lisa sitting there. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Iron Workers Union, Local 7. Thank you. Laborers Union, Local 133. Plumbers and Gas Fitters, Local 12. International Union of Elevator Operators, Local 4. And the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades, Local 35. They're all, they're all working on the site now or will be working soon when we start into the buildings. Uh, and next, I'm excited to publicly announce for the first time our newest partner, and retail anchor, Target. Target will be opening. This. In, in the steel that's up in that corner of the site, Target will be opening up 
a flexible format store, customized for Quincy. It's about 40,000 square feet. It'll include groceries, health, personal care, and beauty products, kids and baby products and toys, men's and women's apparel, sporting goods, technology, electronics, and entertainment. Give them a whole advertisement here. And, and with your Target mobile app, you can order online and pick up at the store when you get off the tee. What could be more, what could be more convenient for the, uh, but it'd be great for the neighborhood and the residents. So, you know, I began with leadership and partnership. And as you can see, having the best leaders, having the best team of partners, that's what lets us take this seven acre parking lot and turn it into this beautiful community, the Abbey. So thank you. Next, I think Lauren. Lauren is going to come up next. Thank you so much, DJ. And now to introduce Toby Bazito, CEO of the Bazito Group. Thank you. Good morning. Man, this place is louder than my house, and I have, th I have three little kids <laughs> and three dogs. Uh, thank you all for being here. Everywhere that our company develops, we consider ourselves guests in the neighborhood. And any courteous guest should bring a gift for their host. In this case, our host is the wonderful city of Quincy, and I certainly did not want to arrive empty-handed. For those of you that know me, you might know that I have a passion for collecting signed books and letters from people that have made a positive difference in their lifetime. Holding copies of these artifacts in your hands literally brings history alive. Abigail Adams is most certainly a person who made a tremendous difference in her lifetime. She was a for force of nature. As you know, she was the wife of President John Adams, the second president, as well as the mother of John Quincy Adams, the sixth president. Abigail became one of John Adams' most trusted advisors. Her more than 1,000 letters of advice and counsel to him are legendary. Her insightful thinking about women's rights and government played a role in the formation of this great country. Effectively, in her letters to her husband, she helped shape American history with a pen. Abigail also spent a good deal of time writing her sons and those close to her, imparting her kindness and wisdom with a gentle touch. So today, we are incredibly proud to present Mayor Koch in the city of Quincy, an original letter written by Abigail Adams to her son, Thomas Boylston Adams. We felt this letter should not be in the hands of a private collector, rather it should be here, home in Quincy. To put this letter in perspective, it was written more than 216 years ago in 1803. In this letter, she wrote about improvements she and her husband were making to the city of Quincy. Your father wishes to get you here. We are improving our town of Quincy by a new bridge and a turnpike road. She amusingly, as most mothers do, spends much of her time imploring her single son to settle down and find a nice woman to marry. In fact, she even goes to suggest a specific woman named Nancy, who would be a most excellent choice. In this letter, she says, Nancy is an affliction from the loss of a valuable brother whose death I read about in the paper. I wanted to write her to console her, but I thought about, in reflection, I better admit it. I presume you will not fail to render her solace where it is most justly due. In other words, she's asking her son to write the woman right away. The good news is that Nancy and Thomas did marry and they had seven children together. We'll hang a replica of this letter in the Abbey, but hope that the citizens of Quincy will be able to enjoy the original wherever you choose to hang it. So thank you, Governor Baker, Mayor Koch, and the city of Quincy for being such extraordinary hosts. We look forward to this beautiful project together. I'm now very pleased to welcome Mayor Koch, who without this project would not be successful. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Your Excellency, members of the Bazzuto family, DJ, Scott, Lauren, uh, Representative Chan, I see Tim Cahill, our Chamber of Commerce President with us, Jim Fats, he's in the entire playing department. Uh, thank you all for this incredible day. Uh, it's nice to hear some people cheering for it, out in the back there. They, evidently, they couldn't get a seat, so. But this is, uh, this is literally home for me. I live three blocks from here. The high school across the street was attended by my parents, my wife and I, my three children have graduated from there. Uh, 
on the corner where the gas station is was the original Sacred Heart Church back in the 1880s. It's now up on the corner of Glover Avenue. My brothers, I was a little younger, my brothers swam in the creeks behind us before State Street South was built. From that high school, there are two Medal of Honor recipients. In fact, uh, Captain Richard Stratton, one of the POWs in World War II, he served as a POW for more than 2,000 days. I went on, came back, uh, great American. He's 88 now, he's coming to Quincy October 19th where we're naming a street for him over Montclair where he grew up. So this area has a tremendous history. But you know, for many, many years, driving by the T, looking at seven acres of asphalt, is not very productive for community. So when the good governor, uh, two things, we could talk a lot about his success. One, challenging municipalities to deal with the housing crunch. Encouraging TODs, transportation-oriented development. And I think Quincy's meeting that challenge to a large extent. But the second part of that, it would not be possible here today, and I'm sure DJ and the Bazudos would not be here if not for the public investment going into the red line. We had 35 to 40 years of neglect on the red line, and it was this governor that stepped up, grabbed the bull by the horns, and said, we're gonna fix it. And they're fixing it. And by the time this place opens, the red line is gonna be practically brand new with all new cars. Uh, with great, much greater capacity so it can deal with the new residents here. So, Your Excellency, thank you for your commitment to the Red Line and Quincy and the South Shore. Uh, also, a special thanks to the Bazudo family. Uh, and, and Steve, I uh, remember visiting you guys down in D.C. looking at some of your products. And it's no wonder you've achieved that five years in a row uh, award. Uh, quite deserved. So, I'm excited uh, to be working with the Bazudo team, the quality of projects and um, uh, the architecturally right down to the programmatic of it is just incredible. So we're grateful for your investment here in our city, Tom, Toby, and the team. And DJ McKinnon, I've dealt with a lot of developers over the years, uh, a lot of people around development, and they don't come any better than DJ McKinnon. Top shelf, professional, detail oriented, no surprises. Uh, DJ, it's a pleasure to work with you. Thank you for your commitment as well. <laughs> to all those involved, uh, Pat Kelly and his crew, to all those unions participating, uh, a lot of work coming this way. Looking forward to the finished product. Thank you all involved in this project and look forward to the, that first apartment door opening up. God bless. Wonderful. Well, we've come to the end of our program. Um, I'd just like to say one final thank you. Um, really, we've touched on all of our key stakeholders, our partners on the design team um, at the state, at the city. Um, but I'd also like to extend a big thank you to our One Bazudo team, that we have colleagues from our management and construction teams who really came together. It's a very collaborative process um, to, to realize this vision. And a very special thank you to Solomon McCown, Timony Keith, Kate Becker, and Lee Jester, our Callahan team, um, James Risley, who worked tirelessly to plan today's festivities. As we adjourn, we'd like to ask the elected officials to join us here in the tent for a few photos. And thank you again for coming to help us celebrate this special occasion.